happy to uh, have the chance to okay here uh, to have the chance to speak with you today a little bit about Marco Polo. Um, I'm just curious, perhaps in the chat, you can let me know if, if you had stopped by our booth. Um, uh, just curious, uh, we were at the conference, my colleague and I, Shaquita, we gave a number of demonstrations and we were showing kind of all the different ways that Marco Polo can support the important work that uh, you all are doing out there across um, our great state here in uh, North Carolina. I'm in Chapel Hill, so we're not too far away from uh, from Greensboro. And I've had the chance to come and uh, speak with some of the different partnerships across the state um, and I would welcome the opportunity to, um, to have some more conversations. So um, just to get going, I thought I'd go ahead here and, and actually let me just open up the chat. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just share a few slides with you. And if um, if you don't mind them, uh, you can take yourself off mute. If if I ask a question and, and someone has a thought, uh, please please let me know. Um, but really, what I wanted to do today was talk a little bit about how Marco Polo really supports something that's very essential, very important that I didn't quite realize, and that is uh, conversations and the importance of having really good conversations with children. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let's just got my chat here. Um, great. Um, so I'll go ahead and just go through my slides here. Like I said, stop me uh, in the chat or um, get off mute. But uh, let me know just again in the chat or off mute. Who knows what conversation turns are? Anybody know what conversation turns are? Okay, it's kind of like ping pong. Um, basically, conversation turns are the serve and return, the serve and the volleying that uh, one has between another person. And with children, it's teachers talking to children, asking open-ended questions, listening to children's questions, trying to answer, and, and it's that back and forth that's so critical. Uh, I got a very short video here I'm going to share with you. Um, again, in the chat, you can let me know if you've seen this before, but we'll just a minute or two. Did you understand it, though? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, not, not this one. This one. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I was wondering. I don't know what they're going to do next season because they're going to get some stuff this time. Exactly. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, has anybody seen that video before? Okay, good. I see uh, um, Ms. Porter has, Ms. Paler. And if you actually went to the Lena presentation, they showed this video. Um, and full disclosure, I went to the Lena presentation uh, in the morning, and then I went to the presentation that we were helping to be a part of in the afternoon. And I was fascinated by these conversation turns and the important role that they play. So great video here, uh, indeed. Um, so really, uh, and it's a little tricky to do this activity uh, virtually, but I wanted you just to think for a minute, when you have a really good conversation with somebody, again, in the chat, how does that feel? What does it feel like to, be, to have a really good conversation with somebody, a friend, a family member? Feels good, right? You enjoy it. It's you learn something. It, uh, particularly if there's a lot of good back and forth. Um, refreshing, Miss Porter says. Thank you. Yeah, and then so again with that video, I'm imagining that little child feels very good. Any other thoughts of how that little child might feel? Here he is, you know, having a conversation with his his dad. Uh, feels comfortable. Absolutely. Um, you know. I thought to myself, feels safe, feels validated, um, so and, and connected, and all that's really important. And then on the on the right side of my screen, I have this, you know, X. And what's it like to be in a conversation that isn't going well, where the person is, you know, interrupting you or not giving you a chance to answer or you know, telling you what to do? Um, not 
such a good feeling, right? Um, so I just say all that to kind of preface that this idea of like why our conversation turns so important. And again, this was fascinating to me. I didn't quite realize this, but there's research that shows that the way children learn and begin to develop language is by having all these conversations, by asking questions, um, by having those questions being answered, especially when the question gets put back on the child. Well, what do you think? Um, and indeed, this actually relates to their brain structure, IQ, social, emotional, all these critical pieces around language development. And so looking at pre-K classrooms, what we find is that 33% of the utterances by teachers um, are questions. So that's good, right? We know that questions are important because generally questions lead to good conversation. However, let's look at the quality or the kind of question. Turns out 66% of those are either, you know, where's your pencil, where's your chair, or, you know, what color is this? What animal is this? So kind of simple questions, which again, uh, good as far as their questions, but not necessarily as good as they could be with respect to helping children really develop uh, those connections in their brain and such. Another piece here just related to that is, as I said, management language, um, you know, not that complex. And sadly, in uh, low socioeconomic classrooms, the research shows that there's 50% uh, less questions than you might find in um, uh, other, other types of settings where uh, the socioeconomic stats uh, are higher. So, and then on top of that, it gets worse, right? Uh, and we all know this, little kids ask lots of questions, but a lot of times by the time they get to school, um, you know, for different reasons, they might not ask as many questions. Maybe they're not encouraged to, maybe they're worried about their peers, whatever it is, but we go from 50 down to two on average. So this is really good to know, right? So what can we do to support pre-K teachers? What can we do to help pre-K teachers have more of these conversation turns, have better and richer conversations that are going to lead to that brain structure and that brain development? Well, um, how about some PD? Um, great idea, right? It is a great idea, except, first of all, you know, how many of you have extra time for PD? Probably not so many. So PD can be challenging. On top of that, there's some stats that I didn't realize. But one-shot PD really doesn't transfer much into practice or impact, uh, impact student performance. Um, and oftentimes we really don't um, uh, see um, any change in practice. So that we, we, we help educate folks, but oftentimes they go back to the same kinds of behaviors. Um, and this last piece, sorry, PD, professional development, professional development. Um, so training our teachers to do this. So turns out it takes 14 hours of professional development to be able to really show impact uh, as far as a teacher being able to have impact on children's learning. And so um, who has 14 hours? Challenging, right? So all that to say, um, you know, what if, and this is important, right? We have to make sure the kids have things to talk about so that we raise their curiosity. Um, what if we were able to help teachers get better at asking questions so they had more of those conversation turns, which as we know, lead to better brain development, which in turn leads to um, kids' uh, IQ scores and just better better uh, outcomes. Um, and in order to do that, we want to help them make better open-ended questions, higher order thinking questions. And as I said at the beginning, turning those questions back to children. Well, what do you think? Trying to get them to be the ones, back to what, uh, you know, the title of this presentation, child-led conversations, trying to boost those. And then finally, to this challenge around professional development, what if the professional development, the training and the support for teachers to do this was embedded in their daily practice? Well, that leads me to, let me just go here. First of all, any questions on anything that I just shared, either in the chat or uh, getting off mute?
not seeing anything in the um, in the chat. Anybody? No questions. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is take a few moments to walk you through the Marco Polo platform. So basically, Marco Polo Learning um, started as an app for children. And so parents could buy this app and kids could go on and watch these videos. And we thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, however, what we realized is what if we could uh, provide a platform that teachers could use so it's more of a teacher-facing tool to support them to, in turn, broaden children's experiences and, and most importantly, help with uh, supporting teachers to kind of those best practices around conversation, around how to use technology in the classroom. So what we did is we created this, this set of uh, about a thousand videos, very, very short videos. I think of these videos as seeds of instruction, little things that teachers can use to start conversations. Um, and it's great, you know, kids have interests, dinosaurs, things like that, you know, maybe animals, all kinds of things. But what if we help teachers and connected the videos to their curriculum? So while you can go up here and type in dinosaurs, or you can go over here to the subject area and pick science or math, what I think is the most powerful of this is our alignments to curriculum. So if we're gonna support teachers, we have to make it easy for them and we have to make it connected to the very things that we're, we're asking them to do. So we know that many teachers uh, across North Carolina do use the creative curriculum. I actually used to work for teaching strategies. So um, you can either thank me or blame me if you're one of those folks that has it at your program. Um, and also Frog Street, whatever the, the curriculum that you're using is, we've created this alignment. So if you go to the creative curriculum, we've put together a set of videos that go along with each of the studies. So let's just say that you know, you're know you working on the water study. Here we have a curated set of very short videos for teachers to use in their classrooms. So this is great. This kind of speaks to that first bullet I had, which is, Let's give kids more things to talk about, right? So we can't, um, you know, bring a kid to the ocean and necessarily show them a jellyfish but, or a shark, but what if we could bring that into the classroom? So here's a jelly, our jellyfish video. Um, and before I show you the video, I just want to point out, connecting this back to, to conversations with each video, every single video comes with an educator guide. And in our educator guide, we give a little introduction to the video, but most importantly, getting back to those questions and the importance of conversation turns. Um, I just did a little activity with a bunch of uh, directors, Head Start directors, and I asked them at their tables to come up with some open-ended questions uh, that you might ask somebody if you were talking about family. Um, and I was, it was amazing as people were sharing their open-ended questions, I didn't have to say anything. Most of the other people would say, that's not an open-ended question. Well, that's not an open-ended, open-ended questions aren't, aren't easy, especially for young children around some of these ideas that we're introducing them to. So here we're providing lots of good, high quality open-ended questions right here for teachers to use. We also have an activity that goes with each of these videos, as well as a little family engagement piece um, to give parents the chance to do some talking with their children. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but for each video, the idea is if we're providing these educator guides over time, ideally by teachers practicing with our questions and using our questions, they're gonna become more comfortable. In fact, they're gonna become more skilled and asking their own open-ended questions. So let's go ahead and watch the jellyfish video here. I'm just gonna make this a big screen here. Jellyfish. Jellyfish live in cold and warm waters all over the world. Jellyfish have been around for millions of years. They were on the earth before the dinosaurs. Before the dinosaurs? 
Excuse me, have you ever met a Tyrannosaurus Rex? <laughs> wow, jellyfish are beautiful. I could watch them all day. Jellyfish are mesmerizing. They come in a rainbow of colors, too. Some jellyfish are even bioluminescent. That means they make their own light. That's really useful if you're afraid of the dark. What can you see inside this jellyfish? Not much. I can see straight through it. That's because jellyfish don't have any bones or any brains. And they only have one opening in the center of their body. Jellyfish eat and poop from the same place. What? Whoa! Excellent. Anybody have any thoughts, comments, questions about the video? Either in chat or taking yourself off mute. Well, one thing I want to point out um, that's very, very important is the length. If you notice, it's only a minute and 16 seconds. So these videos are really short. They're designed to be you know, high quality, have a mix of real life footage and some animation. The characters, the Marco Polo characters, are also modeling questions, open-ended questions as well. So within the video, you see that. But does anybody want to try and chat to come up with an open-ended question that you might ask children after watching this video? Come on, don't be shy. What do you think jellyfish like to eat? Awesome. Good one. C. Johnson. Nice, nice. Yeah, the idea here is uh, tr uh, what would you, what would a jellyfish, how would a jellyfish <laughs> die? How does it move? I love it. Awesome. So clearly you all are very uh, experienced in this. The, the idea here, like I said, is we're going to give these questions. So uh, there's even an activity at the beginning where the kids would throw a ball around that we've taped some um, um, ribbons to to show kind of the way that the the jellyfish uh, tentacles move in the in the water. Um, and as we're watching the video, jellyfish have no brains, no bones. They live in the ocean. They're very different than people. In what ways are jellyfish similar to people? Um, so again, all kinds of questions here, as well as, as I said before, a, an activity. So with each video come the guide with the questions. As I shared, the uh, the little characters are modeling questions. Um, and on top of that, if you wanted to keep going with the jellyfish idea, we also have a letter series. Um, and the letter series, I'm just going to mute this here and we'll go a little quick, but for each letter, we show um, children how to say the letter and how to draw the letter. Oh, let me just zip this here. Um, so showing them how to draw the letter, how to show the letter, um, and then we connect it to an animal um, or something. This is called our letter art series. And the idea with this one is J is for jellyfish and children have a chance to draw to turn the J into a jellyfish, which again connects back to that uh, video. So lots of ways we're trying to make connections for children. And as I said, support teachers to ask good questions to increase those child-led conversations. Um, another video I just want to show real quick, a series here are our social emotional videos. So sometimes it's hard for teachers to talk to children about more complex emotions. So of course, it's easy to talk about happy, being feeling happy or sad. But what if, um, you know, we're talking about a, a more complex emotion like nervousness, for example. Um, so for each of these videos, same thing. We've got the video really short, a minute, 23 seconds, the educator guide, um, and I also just want to point out, each video comes in English. It also comes in Spanish and Mandarin. Um, 
And for each of these videos, as I said, we have an educator guide. So let's go ahead and we'll watch this video. Nervousness. I have a poetry recital, but I feel shaky and sweaty. And it feels like there are butterflies inside my tummy. It sounds like you're nervous, Gorby. Sometimes that can also be called anxious. You can get this feeling when you're worried about what will happen. Often when we're nervous, we think that something is going to go wrong, but it helps to imagine that good things are going to happen. Taking deep breaths can help calm you down. I'll imagine doing well and breathe. The butterflies have flown. Are you oh, no. ready to perform your poem now? I think so. Sorry. Oh. I just saw someone said I couldn't see it, so I think we're good now. The poem is called Nervousness. If you are feeling nervous today, find good things to think about. Your tummy butterflies will fly away as you breathe in. And out. Well done, Gorby. So again, each of the videos is designed to support um, some of these more complex emotions. And then ideally, you know, when you're in a classroom, you know, you could talk to children about, are you feeling, you know, butterflies? Maybe practice the breathing exercise. So we're trying to support uh, teachers to do these different um talk about all these different things with, with some help from, from the guides. Anybody have any questions on anything that I've showed you so far? So now I wanna talk a little bit about uh, families and helping families, supporting families to have those same types of conversations uh, that we know are gonna make a difference for a child's brain development. So first thing here, I wanna just show that you're, you're able to, teachers are able to create playlists so, for example, they might be using the video for Jellyfish whole class, or they might have a station in the classroom where there's a couple of tablets and children are, are watching those videos. Um, teachers uh, can also have children watch videos at home. Each child will get an app that they can use on their parent's phone or tablet and be able to access the Marco Polo for Families app. Um, but here, what I, is, is pretty cool is if you do um, something like this, let's say that you wanted to have children, you have a student uh, in the classroom, uh, maybe it's Tommy, and he likes cars. So you could teach a, could create a playlist and go in here and find some videos that relate to cars. Um, and, you know, maybe the electric car, the Formula One car. So create uh, this playlist. Um, and then um, what is really cool, I think, for teachers is they can hit this continue button and teachers can create a personalized video. And this video, I'll just show you real quick. Hey, Tommy, today we learned about cars. I made this little playlist for you to be able to uh, show your parents and learn more about cars at home. So this video here will be the first thing that the child sees on their little tablet or their iPhone when they log in uh, on their parent's device. Um, and teachers can decide, do they just want to send this to Tommy or do they want to send it to the whole class or perhaps a group? So they can get very um, customized when it comes to providing these videos. And I'll just do this one here to get out. Um, so now what I'd like to show you is, and I'm just going to, does anybody have any questions? I see one uh, good video to start conversations um, about, absolutely. And those, those social emotional videos can be used, you know, as part of morning meeting to introduce, like talk about emotions or perhaps in the moment, you know, you, as I said, you have a child that's um, feeling anxious or is feeling um frustrated. So I want to go back here and do one more share um, just to show you the, the final piece around um, the family. Um, 
So can everybody see uh, this video here? Um, thumbs up if you could see the um, the video uh, with a little boy, um, red red shirt, green shirt. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Ms. Porter. Um, so this here, I'm going to show you. It's, it's we're going to watch it um, without any sound, but I want you to imagine that playlist that the teacher sent home. Um, and basically, as I said, when the child logs in, they'll see their teacher right there, and their teacher will, you know, be saying whatever that little mini mini video uh, was that she created for him. But here, this child is watching one on invention. So he's at home. He's watching this video on inventions. Um, again, this might be he's watching it because he chose it or perhaps the teacher assigned it. doesn't matter. But as he's watching the video, a little heart um, sign comes up in the right-hand screen. And if he likes that video, if he presses that little heart, then an email gets sent or a text to the family. And that shows the family this child just watched this video. Here's a link if you want to watch it. But what I think is most powerful and really supports the, the conversation piece that we've been talking about is we then provide the family with a couple of good open-ended questions to get the conversation going at home. So the idea here is if we know that having good conversations, having boosting those conversation turns, asking good open-ended questions, all of that really does lead to a child learning more vocabulary, understanding the world more, and building those brain pathways that we know are essential to a, a healthy child's development. Let's support teachers to boost those conversations, and uh, let's also do that uh, for parents. And the piece around the teachers, we could have a professional development session where we taught and help teachers, you know, train teachers, support teachers, to build those skills, but we need 14 hours, as I said. So the idea of the platform is by using this platform, not only are you able to bring the world into the classroom and give teachers sort of ways to enrich and enhance their curriculum, but in turn, we're supporting teachers to ask those essential questions, to engage in that dialogue with that child. So that child feels comfortable, feels validated, and most importantly, as I said, builds that brain um, as far as all those connections. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing there and just check in chat. And again, um, if you want to come off mute, anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts about anything that I shared with you? Uh, Ms. Porter. I just really like um, the Marco Polo concept because um, it, it encourages conversation, open conversation, not just yes, no, and one word um, comments. And it also encourages the parents to have conversation with the child. And we know um, we can do what we can do in the classroom, but if that's not carried on in the home or reinforced, then it really doesn't serve much benefit to the child. So I really like that. Excellent. Thank you. Good, good, good point. Good sharing. I see uh Ms. Paylor says she loves it. Any any other thoughts about th something about it that stood out? Excellent. Well I just want to uh, put in the chat um my my uh um, email address. If anybody is interested in talking more um, to me or any of my colleagues about the program and seeing if um, you know this is something that could uh, work well in the programs that that you all are at, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. It's Jonathan at MarcoPoloLearning.com, and uh, perhaps we could find a way to uh, support your Smart Start program. Any other final questions, comments, thoughts before we end?
Excellent. Uh, Ms. Burnaby asked about the fee. So we sell a subscription, a classroom subscription, um, and the subscription includes three licenses for a teacher. So, you know, a number of adults can be working in that classroom and up to 25 licenses for children. Um, and remember that includes that uh, platform that I shared, the Marco Polo for educators for the teacher, but also each of those 25 children have that app that they can use at home. Um, and it also includes all of the training and professional development to get you uh, up and running on this, make sure your teachers feel comfortable. Um, administrators know how to kind of look at data and reports and things like that. Um, and the cost for the subscription is $600 a classroom. And I believe Ebony yeah. has her hand up, Jonathan. Oh, Ms. Porter, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, I'm well, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I just I didn't put my hand down. Oh. Well, with that um, subscription, it would allow the um, child also to use it at home. Is there a way that parents could, like, on their own, maybe, like, when school's out, um, get their own subscription? Great question. So, first of all, it's an annual subscription. So, the, the subscription would go over the summer as well. Um, we do sell, as I, I mentioned this at the beginning of the presentation, we, we started, Marco Polo began as an app uh, for children, a child-facing app that parents could buy for their children. Um, that's something different. Um, you can look on the app store for Marco Polo, World School, I believe it's called. Uh, but what we're talking about here today is, is the Marco Polo for Educators platform. Um, and as I said, it, it includes the piece for the teachers and then allows the families to use the program uh, via that app that connects to this. And the nice part about that is the teachers can see what the children are doing. Uh, families also have a chance to kind of, as I said, get some insight and be supported with those, those questions. Any other comments or questions, thoughts? Well, wonderful, Jonathan. Thank you so much for today's session. I think we got some very good information here. So, so we have yeah. Jonathan's contact information, but if you have any questions or I can help you to get with Jonathan, please let me know. We will upload this recording, so you may uh, watch it again if you like or share it with others. So again, thank you all for coming and um, look forward to seeing you again, Jonathan. Thanks again. You're very welcome, Yvonne. Thank you for the opportunity. It was great to have everybody join us today, and um, I hope I have the chance to uh, speak with each of you um, as uh, to learn more if you're interested. Thank you. So enjoy, so enjoy the rest of your day. Okay.